Hello, I'm Eli from Landlord Gurus, and we have Chris here, our co-founder. And today we're going to talk a little bit about changing locks on units and common areas when there's a changeover in tenants. So first question is, should landlords change locks uh, when there's a turnover? And Chris, you've written about this. What's your take on that? Generally, I think that it's a good idea. I know that not everybody does it. Um, it can be complicated, uh, but there are a lot of reasons why you should, and we'll get into those later and we'll, we'll talk about what those options might be. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, first we can discuss what are your responsibilities as a landlord, right? You know, are you required to change locks? And I think that sort of depends. <laughs> yeah, location by location. Yeah, we are required to here in Seattle. My guess is that most places don't require it, but we highly recommend that you look into the law and be sure that if you are required to do it, that you're absolutely following through on that, both so you're not on the wrong side of the law, as well as the potential for being liable for some kind of damages if you don't and somebody has an issue with somebody breaking in or that type of thing. Yeah, I think it's common in a lot of places where if there's evidence of domestic violence, things like that, where you're probably responsible for changing the locks in those cases, just to make yeah. sure that the abuser doesn't get back in to the units. Yeah. And... Even in cases where there isn't any kind of a conflict, uh, it just feels to me like the right thing to do right. to help ensure the security of your new tenant by making sure that only they have the keys right. or access. Right. right. Yeah. And so, you know, when you don't change keys, you end up with keys floating around. You don't know who's in possession of a key to a particular unit. You just never know what can happen, both in terms of access by people who shouldn't have access. And then also just in terms of you as a landlord, keeping track of all the keys in case somebody does get locked out, you want to be able to have a copy that you can get to them or, you know, that they can go get a copy made themselves. So right. it's, it's, it can be, you know, I, I'm sure you've dealt with keychains and I know I do. I've got keychains of, yeah, exactly. I got one that big. <laughs> yeah. rain, so and um, Fortunately, I'm using it less and less, but yeah, it's, it's something that I'd like to ditch altogether. Some of those may not even be valid keys anymore, right? Maybe you've changed the lock and you right. the key around. So it can be confusing. And you have some recommendations as far as how you can take care of that and not have to to deal with that. First off, why should you change locks or change a a method of access between tenants? So some of the benefits that come to mind for me are that I don't have to, to call a uh, locksmith uh, each time I have a turnover, which was all costing me $100 a pop. And you can either pay a locksmith a rekey or you can buy a deadbolt and put it in and they're going to be about the, the same, same price. So there's the security uh, element where only your new tenant and you have access uh, to the unit. And we'll get into the recommendations on how to do this, but there are a lot of benefits with some of the new options out there. So I guess that leads us to what we recommend. Right. So what are your thoughts on what we recommend? Do you rekey? How do you do it? Yeah. So I guess to start off, yes, I think it's a good idea to rekey or to have new access for each new tenant that comes through, whether that's a new key, a new lock or something different. So your options are, and you got into this with changing deadbolts or having a locksmith come out and rekey. That's option number one. Right. And that's mm -hmm. probably the most manual and the most kind of old school way of doing it. Right. That's what, it's, that's what you did. And so that's an option. And like you said, it, it probably is going to cost you the same, whether you get a new deadbolt and put in yourself or whether you get a locksmith to, to rekey. Another option is getting an electronic lock that you can install and it has the a, you know, numbered keypad and you can set codes. In some cases, I've got one where you can set like eight different codes at a time. You know, if you need one code for yourself, one code for the tenant, one code for a maintenance person, whatever. But you set those codes manually and you can change those codes when a tenant leaves and a new one comes in. And then I, everyone has access via the electronic keypad and it usually runs off battery. Yeah. Sometimes it might run off wires, electricity. I'm not sure. Yeah, I use those everywhere now. And actually, it occurs to me as you're talking, it, there are non-electronic versions, which have been around for a while. So that's it's still a, a keypad but they're mechanical mm -hmm. and they are not what I would recommend. And I don't use them. They're more expensive. I think the last time I looked at five to $700, wow. but they're very robust and they're for a commercial application. You know, I think there could be an argument for that. For me, I use the Schlage off the shelf, electronic battery operated, either deadbolts or levers. So what I usually do is have a keyless knob and a keypad deadbolt since the deadbolt is much more secure and I don't want to also have a key or another keypad for lever. I just change out the two of them. Right. The passage knob on non-locking is very cheap and the, the deadbolts a hundred to $130 usually. Yeah. usually. So that's my approach. Yeah. And so the pros of that, as we talked about, you can change codes at any time, you know, for when tenants move in and out, you don't have to deal with keys. 
Uh, and it's a one-time cost as well. You install it once and you don't have to reinstall a new deadbolt every time. The cons maybe are that if they're battery powered and you run out of battery, then hopefully it doesn't happen in the middle of the night or something, but it gives you time that you'd have to change the batteries. And That's then, a routine, that yeah. routine thing. About okay. once a year in my experience. You, okay. you should do it. it. It keeps you uh, uh, from running out of battery if you do it about once a year. Yeah. Good. So, okay. So there are other Wi-Fi enabled as well so that you uh, can program remotely. Right. So yeah, I so those are more in the smart lock category, I suppose, where they're Wi-Fi enabled or you can uh, give access via your phone. You can change codes via your phone. You can even unlock it remotely if you're not there and somebody needs to get in. You can push a button on your phone and it unlocks right there. So those Which are just great. Yeah. yeah, That's great because you can give somebody access without them having access again later. Exactly. So, like a handyman or a plumber or anything like that. If they need cleaner. Anyone. Or yeah. if the tenant forgets their code. <laughs> exactly. And and I think often you can program those codes to expire. Mm. So you can give access to somebody that is only for a short period of time. Right. And then there are also the more sophisticated systems, which are more for larger buildings. Often they'll have access where you can contact the different units and you can be buzzed in. Basically, it's a, it's a modern version of the buzzing in. And that has benefits for package delivery. Uh, they can be as sophisticated as uh, facial uh, recognition. Uh, we've written about uh, one of those uh, systems and we'll link to that as well as another article that we've written about all of this that we're talking about today. But you can get really fancy. Uh, you can do remote showings, which is something I haven't done, but is worth considering. So yeah, lots yeah of that's a good point. Yeah, definitely. If you just open the door for them remotely or give them a code in advance that expires after a particular amount of time and they can go and look at it themselves. Yeah, it's a good idea. Some okay. definite things to consider there about security and who you're letting in and, and that type of thing. And so I guess, you know, back to our recommendations, I know you were saying that you use those battery powered electronic lock that you can change codes on site. They're convenient, they're easy, uh, they're affordable. That's kind of what you've gone with and you like that and you'd recommend that system. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For my purposes with either an individual property or apartment building, that's what I go with, both on common area access as well as individual apartment access. Okay, okay. that's great. I guess we can uh, add links to examples of products like that as well. So you guys can take a look and see what Eli's using. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. share that info. Okay, so. great. Is there anything else that comes up for you about this? That's, that's what comes to mind. Okay. No, I think we covered it. So yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll put some links to our content and example products. And we hope you'll come back for our next episode and follow us and subscribe and, and we'll try and keep good content coming. So thanks for watching. Bye.